joyful noise wherever you may be. For Iron City. Oh, friends, we've ended the first set, but you know we're not done yet because it's time once again for an interview with the artist where we get to learn a little bit more about the musician behind the music. And tonight, our guest, of course, is Charlie Apicella. How's it going, Charlie? Wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, it's great to have you here, man. Now, it's, uh, one of the great things about this job is you get to listen to a lot of ba bands, and it's always amazing to watch artists really get into their own about uh, as, as making it their own. What would you say for you are like some of your inspirations when you're creating music? Like what keeps you sort of what keeps you going? I feel like Alan, my co-leader in the band, Alan Corzin and I, we are primarily focused on the feels. Mm -hmm. So we feel like uh, I know for my own compositions, I always start with the feel. Some people call it the groove. Mm -hmm. And I build the tune up from that. I take a melody that I've been hearing in my head. Sometimes I sing it into my phone. And I string together the melodies and the chords based on the feel that we want to create. That's awesome. Now, you've had some really great uh, influences, actually. You talked earlier about working with Youssef Latif. And in 2014, you uh, worked with one of our perennial favorites here, Pat Martino. What, was that, what were those experiences like, like to be able to soak up that information? My experience with Youssef Latif really put me on quite a trajectory to become a musician. I was an absolute beginner at the time. And uh, he was teaching at the University of Massachusetts. So I was barely studying guitar, but I loved music so much. And without any music training up to that point, I basically kind of taught myself how to read a little bit. And I started to write down even some of the melodies that we hear tonight were germs of ideas that I had back at that time. And after a couple of years, I kept practicing and um, I was able to finally get some guitar lessons. And I auditioned for Youssef in order to enter into his composition studio class. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that first experience going into his studio, showing him the melodies and the chords that I had been working on, and he gave me some advice. I was admitted into his class, and through that I was able to get private lessons with him, private composition lessons. And even though at the time I was a very young musician, and um, it had such an incredible impression on me, really because of his demeanor and the person that he was. And because of that experience, I was able to really connect uh, nicely with Mr. Pat Martino. And Pat often would talk about how the other half of music instruction is having a mentor who guides you through the lifestyle. And it was interesting that so many of the anecdotes that Pat would tell me and so much of his very deep advice were things that Youssef had demonstrated to me all those years before. So the combination of those two influences, and of course I had some, I've had some wonderful friends along the way. Dave Stryker is one of my closest friends and has been a great teacher to me as well. Um, I had a nice friendship the last couple years of, uh, with Vic Juris, who uh, tragically passed away last December. Um, so there's been, there's been many folks, Sonny Fortune, um, another native son here from Philadelphia joined us on our, our record that was a tribute to Jack McDuff. And we're going to do a tribute to Sonny in our second set as well. That's awesome. One last question, and then we'll let you get ready for that second set. What's your favorite Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor? <laughs> I mean, what's it called when you mix them all in, in a bowl and eat them all at once? <laughs> <laughs> awesome thank you very much thank charlie you, and all of you friends out there we'll be back with more of iron city in just 20 minutes so we'll see you then <laughs> 